on the other hand, the concept of an agile release train where you say, let's actually develop on a cadence, let's release on demand, and let's have a train that leaves the station at regular intervals. I think that makes a lot of sense for teams because you, you and I both have dealt with teams where, okay, it's time to release, and the next thing you know, it's two months later and there's nothing that went out the door. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Real Agile or BS. I'm your host, Peter Saddington, Agile Peter, and I'm here with my colleague, Agile Bob. Today, we're going to talk about something that could be pretty, pretty interesting. It's around Agile release trains. Now, for those that are out there, you might not know what an Agile release train is, and I'll give it to you relatively simply here. An agile release train is a primary value stream system that is in the safe, safe guidelines of rolling out safe or agile at scale. What is interesting about agile release trains is it requires about 50 to I think 125 people on an agile release train. And the primary reason that SAFE has instituted this idea of a release train is to ensure that there's organizational alignment ar around the enterprise. And so this has been a topic that's been hot for many, many years, and we're gonna tackle it right now. So are agile release trains real agile or the BS? Agile Bob, I'll let you take the first crack at it. Thanks, that's, a, that's an interesting introduction to them. I think that the the release train concept, I actually kind of like, I think it's real agile, the way that it could be done where you have a group of teams working for a shared goal and delivering at a particular point in time. I think that's real agile. Where it gets to start to be BS is when they say, let's do big upfront planning, let's, let's do it, you know, let's have a, a number of iterations and, and an extra iteration just in case. And, it starts to get really crazy at that point. But I think the concept of an agile release train where you basically say, um, develop on cadence, deliver on demand, those things are actually very agile, I think. And most companies with multiple teams working on a project could be helped by the concept of an agile release train if it's done well. I think there's lots of ways to go crazy with it and I'll turn it over to you and see what you think and then we, may, then we can explore it further. I I'm just going to be upfront and honest. I don't like the, the name Agile Release Train. It just never sat with me. Uh, the short form is an art. And I remember seeing a picture early on of an Agile Release Train in art with, you know, a, a, a kind of a speed, a Tokyo or a, a Japanese bullet train with all these different heads of, of people that were on it. And it just seemed really weird to me. One of, one of the things that I really, so I'll give you some context. I got my SPC uh, training to become a, a safe certified trainer, I think back in 2013 or 14, and I had the opportunity to be trained by Alan Shalloway, Al Shalloway, and I was in class with Ron Jeffries and Chet Hendrickson, the authors of XP. And so, um, just a quick story, it was re really interesting seeing Al uh, engage with uh, the two authors of XP uh, in certain ways because there were certain misinterpretations of e extreme programming XP and having three CSTs in the room, myself, Chet, and, uh, and Ron Jeffries, uh, we got in some really interesting conversations. One of the things that I balked against, not, the, not this idea of an agile release train having lots of different teams focused together with alignment, I think that's a great idea, one of the issues that I had with Agile Release Trains is kind of the philosophical backbone or the framework of it. And the reason is, is number one, when you're creating arts or Agile Release Trains, the first part is you must train SPCs. Great. Step two, you must train the leadership. And then you have PI planning. And then you have backlog planning. And then you have to train the teams. And so one of the biggest problems that I had with, with Agile Release Trains is that it seemed like it was more of a sales pitch to pitch training to everyone than actually get them aligned. The second thing that I had a big problem with is that when it came, when it came to Agile Release Trains, they were looking at iterations at 10 weeks in length. And that just seemed way too long for me. As it required a lot of, as you said, a lot of upfront planning. And let's be intellectually honest, safe and agile release trains is for scaled agile. And there are that many different components, that many different teams, that many different variables. When you're planning 10 week sprints for these, for these agile release trains, too much is going to change. I just don't think it's agile enough 
for the variability and flexibility that Agile should have within large enterprises. And so I, I don't have a problem with the whole idea of let's get lots of teams together in alignment from the from the or from all over the organization, from sales, marketing, operations, DevOps, IT, infrastructure, QA, etc. I don't mind that. The problem I had was a lot of was the way that it was framed. We have to do lots of planning. We have to make sure that we train everyone. We have to make sure that everyone's in this in the same same boat. It just leaves out a lot of the opportunity for real agility to take place, which is inspect and adapt be open and agile and flexible to change. So that was, those were my main issues with the backbone of art, not necessarily the practice or the application of it. Yeah, I think when you start getting into what's, what SAFE says for the agile release train, and that's where it really started, but um, they go way overboard in my opinion as well. There's lots of things in there that just aren't applicable. On the other hand, the concept of an agile release train where you say, let's actually develop on a cadence, let's release on demand, and let's have a train that leaves the station at regular intervals. I think that makes a lot of sense for teams because you and I both have dealt with teams where, okay, it's time to release, and the next thing you know, it's two months later and there's nothing that went out the door because they were waiting for the next thing and then waiting for the next thing and then waiting for the next thing. I like the release train. If, you're, if your team misses the release train, guess what? You missed. You're on the next release train. I like that concept. I think that's very agile because I don't want us to wait for a big bang release because we keep waiting for stuff. On the other hand, the overhead of the big room planning, some of the other things, I can see how they can be helpful for a team starting out so that they can identify dependencies and figure out how to work through them. But when we're really dealing with teams that are mature, I think an agile release train concept, and I don't know what we call it other than an agile release train, I like the concept, I don't like the implementation from SAFE, and I don't like the way many companies have implemented it, but certainly the, the concept of regularly releasing, regularly integrating, having fully integrated demos, I love that. Um, I think those kinds of things can be very helpful for most organizations that have multiple teams working on anything. Yeah, and, and, and I, I agree with you wholeheartedly there. One of my first implementations of SAFE, and I wouldn't say it a, was a perfect implementation of SAFE, was around the 2014, 2015 period with a large bank up in Richmond, Virginia. Um, and so one of the things that would frustrated me about implementing this, we had uh, about 90, 93 teams or so, all trained in, in, in SAFE, all trained in agile release trains and all the, the SAFE methodology and framework. One of the things that frustrated me is that from the outside, things didn't look all that much different. And so whenever I'm looking towards like a new framework, a new philosophy, a new idea of how to do work, um, and I think this is a lot of what, the way that SAFE originally uh, kind of grew and espoused to be is this new idea on how to take on complexity in a large organization. One of the problems that I saw, at least in my implementation, and this could be just me or it could be my, my fault in the way that I implemented it, is that from the outside, it didn't look like it changed all that much. It seemed like, hey, we currently are trying to align a large organization together uh, and we're going to call it an agile release train now. Did that change behaviors all that much? Not really. Did everyone get trained? Yes, they did, but in terms of the undergirding philosophical reasons of why, why is it important to change? That was a big part that was missing from a lot of the training and a lot of the application of safe and agile release trains in this client. Now, one of the things that we at Agile for All focus a ton on are principle-based decisions, principle-based principle uh, mechanisms in your company that in the reason why we should be agile or do agile as opposed to this is how you do it. And this is the prescription of how you do it. And I think in a lot of ways, the prescription of, of agile release trains and the way that it was implemented removed a lot of the opportunity to say, Hey, why are we doing this? Is this really right way to do this? Or are we just overlaying some, a, a new uh, kind of nomenclature across what is already existing? And so for me, I didn't see a whole lot of change in the organization by releasing or creating agile release trains. And maybe that was the frustration and maybe that was just my, my noobishness or my, green, my greenness not implementing it correctly. What say you? Well, I think that it's easy to implement it incorrectly and even to implement it correctly. I'm not sure that it's really agile. I mean, mm. well, who is this agile release train engineer? What is that? <laughs> and, 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 you know, why are we, why are we doing certain of the things that are in there? It just, it doesn't make sense to me in some cases because it simply gives the team an opportunity to fall back to old practices. Mm. Now I get that they're trying to implement it in certain ways. And if you implement it the way that it's supposed to be done in safe, 
I think you could end up with good training wheels to get a team to a better place than where they were. The problem is the organization needs to be willing to change. And as you and I both know, people don't like to be changed. So that's number one. And number two, they don't want to, they don't want to change without understanding the change. So simply right. training them doesn't give them what you need, as you've got, as you said. So I think that whole concept is BS. I think if we had a new name for the core of what an agile release train is, and I don't know what that new name would be, I think it could be something that people could, could latch onto and say, that's a good concept. I think agile release train as a whole, people see us saying, you know, the concept is good and, you know, it could be implemented as BS. I think most, if not almost all of the implementations out there are BS. You need about three things to make it be true agile and everything beyond that is BS. Um, but I don't know what to call that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what to call it either. Again, I guess it, in my summary of whether uh, agile release trains are, is re, real agile or BS, I'm going to take a middle road. I think, I'm, again, that you and I are in alignment and agreement here that having organizational alignment from all the different departments, all the different business units is essential when it comes to Agile, period. I think we can agree on that. What we call it is going to be something else. However, when it comes to the specifics of how an Agile release train is implemented, when it comes to 10, you know, 10 week sprints, um, each, each team needs to go from a, uh, five sprints at two weeks each. They have their, their, their reviews at every 60, if I remember correctly, 120 days. So you're talking about, you know, 10 weeks or so. It just doesn't seem very agile. It just seems like what, what, what every large organization is already doing, which is quarterly releases, but things change and things need to be open to change. And I just don't think agile release trains in, in terms of the way that it's applied really changes all that much if you're still going to be releasing software every three months. It just, that's not agile at all. So I'll call that BS. Yeah, I think if people look at their agile release chains and they don't understand why they're doing them or they leave the station at different times or a lot of other things that could be out there, I think they can call BS on their own organization. Perfect. Well, there you have it, guys. Let us know your thoughts on agile release trains. Is it real agile? or BS, Agile Bob and myself, Agile Peter here. We'll look forward to your comments. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you guys next time.